Welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Glad you could join me here today as always. And it's another beautiful sunny day in St. Louis, Missouri today. Hope it's wonderful wherever you are in the world. And we will continue today with The Power Is Within. We are on location 140 in the ebook. And we will start off with talking about watching TV. Do you watch a lot of TV? Nothing wrong with TV, but everything in moderation. I don't watch TV. Occasionally I watch a movie uh, on the internet. So I can't say I never watch TV because that's kind of a replacement for TV nowadays. So we will continue, but before we do, smash that like button and subscribe, hit the notification bell. We have a video coming out every day. 4 p.m. Central Standard Time during the week and on the weekends, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here we go. Of course, there is nothing wrong with watching TV. Nothing wrong with resting and enjoying any form of entertainment. But if you find yourself escaping into oblivion every night, whether that is the television or the bottle or anything else, you might want to ask yourself, what am I escaping from? If you spend the whole weekend dreading Monday and spend the whole week looking forward to the weekend, what exactly are you living for? <clears throat> That's the point I want to make too. We have what, hump day, Wednesday, like you're just trying to get through the week. And TGIF, thank God it's Friday. I mean, is that the way you live your life? I, I probably did that years ago, I can't remember, but every day is the day. As I said yesterday, the present moment is the day. You have to find something you enjoy doing because most of your life will be spent serving, either working for someone else or if you're self-employed or an entrepreneur, you are serving people in some way. So you either need to find something you enjoy doing or try to find something about what you are doing that you enjoy. Because your whole life consists of today, tomorrow, every day. Each day is your whole life. So if you're, you're dreading Monday, and speaking of Monday, I've heard statistically that more people have heart attacks on Monday morning because I guess they're going to a job that they hate. I would hate to think that I had to get up every Monday and dread going into work for a whole week just so I could look forward to another weekend. But many people live their lives that way. But there is a better way. You can do what you love to do, or you can learn to love what you do. It's kind of like my father said when he tried to get me to eat peas, he said, I said, Dad, I don't like peas. He said, learn to like them. Well, guess what? Today, I really like peas. They're one of my favorite vegetables. <laughs> so how did that happen? I don't know how it happened. Although spinach, he didn't tell me to learn to like that, and I never did like it, so don't know why. But the point is, learn to like what you do. Find something about what you do that you enjoy and focus on that. And if you do hate what you do, then by all means, find something that you love to do. Now, that may not be easy to do <clears throat> because you're going to have to face some fears. Because as I have said before, each of us have a desire within us, a God-given desire, if you like, that we are capable of doing that will bring us great joy, happiness, and fulfillment. But usually what stands in the way of that is fear. You have to walk through that fear. You're afraid it won't work out. You have a family to support. How can you quit your job and do this? What if, what if you can't support your family on this vision you have or this idea you have? Well, don't quit your job. Spend that time that you uh, watch TV, that you use watching TV to work on this project, to step into this, to do a little bit at a time. You don't have to jump in all at once. Although if you want to do that, if you have the courage, by all means, jump in. 
We all have a dream tucked away inside of us somewhere, as I was just saying. Sometimes we stuff it back as far as we can because we need to be reasonable or rational or stable. The list goes on and on with countless reasons or better said, excuses. Why we shouldn't pursue the very purpose we were born with. Our parents wouldn't like it. We have to raise our kids. God forbid we do something so foolish as to take a risk and follow our passion. But do you see where that leaves you? You eat bread so that you can have energy enough to work. So you can make just enough money to buy some more bread. So that you can have enough energy to work again. And again and again the cycle continues. It's a meager existence and it only ends when you start living for meaning rather than living for bread. And you only start living for meaning when you step out and pursue it. And that takes courage. I understand the fear. I face fear every day. And sometimes I don't even realize it's fear. Procrastination. I have a client right now that I have to call and work out the accounts with get this account uh, finished up. We had some problems on the job. We broke his uh, pedestal sink and we've taken care of everything, but I let him hold back on half of the money uh, on the, the whole job. So, you know, just because we had that problem. But now the sink didn't come in. It's going to be another 15 days and I need this money for uh, to keep uh, the payroll going without having to dip into my other funds so I need to call him up and ask him if we can settle this up except for maybe a small amount of money $500 or $1,000 okay not a big deal but I have to keep the cash flow going in the business otherwise I have to draw money out of somewhere else to pay for things and I don't want to do that so there's a little fear there but I'm sure he will agree with it. He's a real good customer, but I just don't want to ask. Maybe some pride there too. So a lot of times fear and pride will stop us from achieving our goals or from living the life that we want to live. That was just one example, but there are many times I sit down to write. Every time I sit down to write, and when I'm writing a new book, I'm afraid that I won't be able to think of anything to write about. But once I sit down and start, it just flows out. So I'm sure if you stop and think about it, there are many things that you want to do that you don't do, and it's fear stopping you. Maybe disguised as procrastination, uh, your pride gets in the way, you don't want to ask for help, and you say, well, they probably, they're busy, they don't have time to help me. And that's not true, it's really you. Everything begins and ends within you. Okay, but we don't. We live perpetually on someday aisle. Surely you've heard of it. I'll start that business when the kids get out of school. I'll take that trip when I get a raise. I'll build that dream house when I finish paying for the kids college. Someday I'll do it all, but not right now. Right now, it's too great a risk. I better wait until it's safe. We have become so safe in the U.S. that we don't live our lives anymore. What's the, what's the saying now? Every time I turn around, be safe because of the, uh, the latest uh, health crisis or the previous health crisis, which they seem to say they're getting under control now. I beg to differ. I think it was under control all along. But whatever your perception of that is, I'm not going to argue with you. My life continued just the same as it did before this and it's continuing the same now. I know many people lost businesses and I have compassion for those people. I think it was totally avoidable, but that's a whole other video and we won't talk about that today. I respect everyone's opinion on the situation and how you dealt with it. That's uh, up to each individual. Okay, but someday I'll. So you got to step out now. Someday I'll just never comes. It never happens. You're always putting it off until this is right, until everything's perfect, until it's safe. 
It's never going to be safe. Do you think the Wright brothers were safe when they flew? When the best scientific minds of the time had proved that man could never fly? That it was a privilege reserved for the birds? How dangerous was that? I remember when I, when I was a kid, I was about 11 or 12, and I tried to make a hang glider. Okay, what was I going to do if it would have actually flown? <laughs> I was thinking about that this morning. I don't know, but I was willing to take the risk. I never got it off the ground. <laughs> I wasn't quite brave enough to jump off of a cliff, but I would run down a uh, extremely sloped hill. Okay, uh, like I said, I never got off the ground, but I was trying. I was willing to take that risk. And if you think back to your childhood, I bet there were many times you took risks and sometimes you got hurt, but you did it. You were adventurous. <clears throat> Excuse me, you, you, you didn't care. You were thinking of the end result. You weren't thinking about what if I get hurt. But as we get older, we just say, oh, well, maybe, maybe we, get, we get hurt. We get knocked down a few times and we start playing it safe. And playing it safe just constricts your life. I'm not saying to be stupid. I believe in safety. You know, on my, on my, uh, my construction, my painting company, we follow safety procedures. But don't be so safe in your life that you never take a risk. We wouldn't be where we are today as a nation in the USA had we played it safe. Columbus never would have left Europe had he played it safe. The settlers never would have come here had they played it safe. Don't be so safe you don't live your life. And then you look back at the end of it and you think, I didn't do anything. And now it's too late. It's never too late to do something. Do something. Take a risk. Live. We have things so safe now. People have to jump off of bridges with bungee cords. They have to go skydiving. They have to climb cliffs. Because we don't do anything anymore. Because we're afraid. Kids don't even ride bicycles hardly without helmets. I'm not saying it's bad to wear a helmet. Of course, that's a good idea. The point is we need to take risks, calculated risks, sometimes not too calculated, but we need to risk. We need to have a little more adventure in our lives. Think about that. And we will continue this Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. We'll see. I may have a different topic for tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. Smash that like button, subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow.